The Joe Rogan Experience has over 2,400 episodes, and out of those, around 200 have featured comedians. And out of all of them, Shane Gillis might be the funniest guest ever. One reason is, he's never afraid to push the conversation to its absolute limit. Like the time when Joe was sharing a truly terrifying story from his childhood. When I was 13, we were hanging around this lake in uh, Jamaica Plain. And this guy was always like running around the lake. He was <laughs> jogging. Uh, I'm, I'm fishing, and he comes by, and he's drunk. He tells me he loves me. He tells me he loves me, but there can be no love without this. I had my hand on my knife, and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to stab this guy. I would have trusted the guy. I would have been like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're smarter than uh, well, me. I, I'll see you later. <laughs> Shane jumps in with a story about a guy from his hometown who was just like the one Joe was describing. Then, about a half hour later, Shane circles back to it with a take that's absolutely hilarious. I mean, it would have been very scary, but I'll tell you what, that guy would have sucked the soul out of you, dude. Ooh, that guy's been jogging, thinking about it for <laughs> Years, dude. <laughs> that guy would have. <laughs> you would have launched oh. into that f***ing's mouth. <laughs> You'd never be the same, dude. Been, ah! <laughs> dude, a blowjob where you have everything to lose while you're giving it. <laughs> Strong blowjob. This is exactly what makes Shane one of the funniest guests to ever be on JRE. There's nothing funny about SA, but somehow Shane spins the story in a way that has Joe laughing out loud. JRE fans know all too well about Joe's fake laugh. Ah! And if you think they were a little courtesy chuckle he throws out when a guest joke doesn't quite land, but he still wants to respectfully acknowledge the joke. Ah! With Shane, Joe never has to pull out the fake laugh, which speaks volumes about how funny Shane really is. Joe's been in comedy for over 30 years, so when you get him to genuinely laugh, you know it's the real deal. Shane's comedy isn't always highbrow. Most of the time, it's straight up frat boy humor, which is exactly Joe's vibe. A perfect example, when Shane shared one of the most disgusting moments from the TV show Hoarders. Let's take a look at this shit hoarder. You ready? Am I ready? No one's ready. Face. Yeah. This lady's uh, your reactions. shitting in bottles. <laughs> oh boy. For a decade. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's Here's her? the best part. Here's Is that the her? Part. That's the yeah. lady? Yes. Oh my god, there's shit everywhere. Dude. She oh my That's her god. shit bucket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, wait, watch, 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 watch. 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 That's this her disgusting. shit bucket. And then she's like, sometimes it gets too heavy, so I have to transfer buckets. Christ, bro, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. She's I can't do this. Oh my god, dude, food. shut the Oh. She lives in a shit house. <laughs> Look at that. Full shit house. That's so insane. Look at that shit everywhere, dude. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. Ugh. Look at her shit bucket. I can't look. Bro, I can't look. look. You have to look. Look at her eating soup, dude. Oh. <laughs> Jesus She's eating Christ. soup uh, on a pile of uh, shit. Dude. <laughs> what the f***? Man. What makes Shane so likable among JRE fans is his relatability. Not many people get the privilege of being on JRE, and even if they did, most of us wouldn't have the guts to show Joe a clip like that. Something Shane probably found just like the rest of us doom scrolling on YouTube. Shane's also the guy who's willing to tell jokes that no one in their right mind would even think of. Just like his bit about Joe's stranger danger, he's got this uncanny ability to take something twisted and awful and somehow make you laugh out loud. My parents saw me do stand up in Harrisburg. They Early. came to a show Same. where they were like one of 12 people in the audience. Oh, no. no. And I had, my closing joke was like, would you rather get shot in the head or 69 with your dad? No <laughs> way. That joke kills. That joke kills. Uh -huh. <laughs> that joke kills. I can still imagine kills, that kills. <laughs> I go, Everybody wants to say you would never suck your dad's dick, but that gun comes out, you and your dad get awfully friendly. <laughs> you got to bring that bit back. So me and my dad are big. We would do it standing. I'd flip his old ass up. <laughs> His new balances would be kicking in the air. My dad was in the front row like, God damn it, what including in this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. As easy as it may seem, it's difficult to take everyday situations and weave them into a funny bit, like getting wasted while tailgating at a football game. Millions of people do it every year, but it takes a real talent to turn that experience into a comedy bit. It was an all-day tailgate. I was at South Carolina versus Tennessee. SEC football. It's a night game in South Carolina. And I'm standing there. And there's just a tiny fence between me and the handicap section. And I literally, I just stepped over it. No oh. one, no one batted an eye, dude. <laughs> I was standing there just, <laughs> for real. I was on the field. Dude. I left my friends. They were in the student <laughs> section. I, the I was just shit face walking around. And I was like, <laughs> stepped in. And dude, people were like looking at me like, checks out. <laughs> Fully checks out. I just, 
Yeah. If you just do that. Yeah. I mean, that's my face when I'm blacked out. I was just... <laughs> Not only can Chain turn everyday situations into comedy gold, but he's also one of the best at self-deprecating. Most good comedians can poke fun at themselves, but Shane takes it a step further. He often uses his self-deprecation as a mirror reflecting how society makes him feel. He knows those feelings might be off, but it's the same thing the crowd is thinking. Like being racist is more, it's like being hungry. You know, it's like, yeah, you're not right now. <laughs> you're not hungry right now, but a cheeseburger could cut you off on the highway. <laughs> the cheeseburger is Jewish in that joke. That joke is a perfect example of how Shane takes his feelings, knowing they might be off, and crafts them into something we can all relate to. Then there are the self-deprecating jokes that don't require much thought, like when he straight up calls himself a redact, which is still very relatable. Bill Steelers this year. Uh, and Gabe Davis, he's a wide receiver. He likes comedy and he likes podcasts and all this stuff. So he invited me to the game. I'm, I'm at the game. End of, I took Adderall there. <laughs> there you go. There's another Adderall. Uh, end of the game, he's like, come down here towards the field. He took his jersey off, autographed it, and handed it to me up in the stands. Whoa. Dude, it's just me and children. Me and little kids are the only dudes like down there trying to get high fives from the players. <laughs> this guy hands me his jersey. And people are like, oh, that's a, it's a guy. Special, like, yeah. NFL Films was filming it. Like, it was, a it was like a sweet moment for them to be giving me a jersey. And I was like, that's why. Yeah. Push, just like, pushing no, just, kids out think, of the I way. I think they thought I was a special needs man. Oh, no. It was just me and children. Rogan's got a few sub podcasts within JRE. Light Companion, Sober October, and the funniest of them all, Protect Our Parks with Shane, Ari Shafir, and Mark Norman. The first time they got together for a podcast, it wasn't even called Protect Our Parks yet. But the name stuck after this moment. Ari was wearing a shirt that said Save East River Park, and he was genuinely serious about the cause. <laughs> You're not defending parks. <laughs> I think so. the parks should be defending. Uh, fuck that it. park. Uh, so that bad. Park? And there's nothing you can do. For real park. Go down you jail. can bike the whole Build bike path past there. Who's biking, dude? Everybody! <laughs> <laughs> Who's biking, dude? <laughs> Who's biking? <laughs> Get rid of him. Uh, Let a guy make money. There's a guy right now, somebody who's trying to buy the park. There is. The last thing he, he really needs is it. some dork coming on a podcast. It's probably like, Trump. Protect the park, man. I hope it's Trump. In the past few years, Shane has become widely recognized as one of, if not the best Trump impersonators in comedy. His recent appearance on Kill Tony as Trump is easily one of the show's best episodes, racking up 16 million views in just three weeks. But back on November 3rd, 2021, when this podcast aired, it was the first time Joe was hearing it. Can you imagine if Trump... It turns you don't want to help Trump? Trump? Hey, Trump, why do you want this park so bad? Oh, you want me to do Trump? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trump impression. Uh, Why is Trump? What's the problem with this park? Why do you want it so bad, Donald? We've got a lot of Jews down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thanks. How'd you know that? How did you know there were so many Jews down there? <laughs> no, stop. No, <laughs> keep going. Come on. No, no. What dude. are you going to do with the park? You can't. A lot of people think that you're you going to put a prison there. Are you going to put a prison there? We might put a prison there. I haven't thought about it. We're thinking about a prison. <laughs> so you're That's pretty a prison. Good. Shane's first podcast with Joe wasn't the smoothest. Instead of the usual banter, it was much more stiff and serious, mainly because Shane was there to tell his side of the SNL story. There was a moment when it seemed like Shane was loosening up enough to start joking around. They were talking about Tim Dillon, and you could tell it was going to be funny from the setup, but it seems like Joe pulled the plug on it. Some car thing, some car rental place didn't honor his reservation. No. So he said there all pets and the guy likes kids and it's like all right well that's crazy he put it on twitter what are we talking about he might get schizophrenic oh he's out there he's there dude yeah, but he's not schizophrenic he's no, doing of course, comedy of course but i'm saying but that's he, he'll literally attack. what you just said was the most schizophrenic thing i've ever heard or I, I went to war with the fucking enterprise and called them all pedophiles it was a small luxury rental car company every once in a while tim will do something that reminds you that he is gay Every you once know, in a while, like, like what? I, like, all right, we're back, folks. Young Jamie went wacky, and he started spazzing out. He started doing karate underneath the table. I'll be all right. Yeah. Well, you're how many Bud Lights in now? Five? This is five. That's a normal. It could have been that Jamie really did just have a computer malfunction, but Joe's excuse was that he was just being wacky and kicked some wires. I think Joe was concerned about Shane's comments on Tim, thinking it wasn't the best move, considering it hadn't even been a year since Shane was fired from SNL. Plus, Joe did mention how many beers Shane had already knocked back, so maybe he was just looking out for his best interest. Like, 
buddy. You've had five beers on your first appearance on the biggest podcast on the planet. Several years have passed since that episode, and now Joe is well aware of Shane's tolerance for booze. Gum. <laughs> that was Ari Shafir, and he is under the Yo, influence of drugs. A lot of guys think they can drink Bud Lights. <laughs> Look at a lot of guy. guys. A lot of guys He's sit around. Quick. How are you so? He's fake Sinatra right now. A lot of guys sit around and go. Man, Bud Light, what's that, water? <laughs> Ooh, we, you find out. <laughs> You're sober as a bird, dude. You're a coward. <laughs> look, at the, look at the bro, dude. Hey, Ari's having heart, our crumb dreams. That's it's what like, a bro does. He's like a blues musician. Yeah. You're on heroin. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to puke? Leading up to the show, Ari made a bet with Shane that he could keep up with him beer for beer. But judging by the stack of cans in front of Ari, he tapped out at 13. Meanwhile, Shane was still sharp and articulate. Sort of. Yeah, dude. He was. He what was year was post World War Two? What? World War Two. Meanwhile, Ari's dead. He was post World War Two. If Ari dies, can I Yo. have his shoes? While Shane was at worst a little slurred, Ari was full on high school prom drunk. Joe was so impressed with Shane's victory that he even compared him to one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Some guys can't handle their Bud Lights. Ari, I would say that I'm disappointed in you, but I'm not. This is exactly what I expected. That was an honorable. Death. Yeah, like Mao. You're you like one of those guys that you know fought Tyson in the eighties, Ari. Yes. <laughs> you gave a value like Bruce Heldon. <laughs> you thought you had a shot. Yeah. And then you saw him and you're like <laughs> with the Bud Lights were Spinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is probably his worst defeat ever. <laughs> like losing to me in Sober October was a given. That was going to happen. Damn. But, oh, but losing oh to you in a drinking God. challenge? Shane, what do you think we should do about Ukraine? I think we should keep sending them billions and billions of dollars. Meanwhile, uh, the gas. Oh, man, he's thrown up. Oh. Gotta say, Shane is built like Homer Simpson in the way he just watches his friends lose a drinking competition, and as he starts to puke, he cracks another beer. Shane Gillis, 100% the funniest dude in the scene right now. Joe, shut up. Shane and Joe have hit the point in their relationship where Shane can say stuff like that to him. I don't think there's ever been another JRE guest who could call Joe out. But Shane is good enough of a friend that he'll hit Joe with the paws. Quads. Imagine how much power is in that. Good lord. Good lord. Look at his body. He's just a ball of tense muscle just exploding on your face. Paws. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded a lot more gay than I was trying to make it sound. To the 2,400-some guest on the Joe Rogan Experience, it's fair to say that Shane is one of the funniest. <laughs>